Okay, here we have a truck with a check engine light on and it also won't go into regen. Customer complains of poor fuel economy, lack of power, and of course the check engine light. We check the codes. And we can see it has a code P0128, which is from the thermostat being stuck open. We're going to go ahead and open this one up and see what's going on with the thermostat. I'll show you a shortcut and a way to get them done. Today I'm going to go over a few things that's from the highlights on taking the upper hose off a 6.4 and also the thermostat. To get the upper hose off, you have to remove this clamp. There's a couple ways I found out. The best way is if you get down there, you can move it back. I just push it back and I'll try to rip it completely out of there and you can just tug up on the hose. That's the best way I found to do it. So I'll either reach down there with the battery out, pull it out. I've also take one, took one and taped it to a uh, long screwdriver so I can go down there and some of, some of them that are stubborn. But one or the other you can get it off that one. And once we have the upper hose out of the way, I've already taken the degas bottle out of the way. I'm just trying to make it so the video flows a lot smoother. But I've taken the, um, the upper hose, the bracket, and all that off of there. We have the, the one clamp that goes around the lower part of the EGR cooler, and we just I take the bolt all the way out, unbolt it, and roll it out. Then there's the bracket that was down here. It only has the one bolt. I just use a three-inch extension with a 13 and take it out. With the clamp off and the bracket out, we can remove it completely. Now this is the tricky part. This is where you save a lot of time because all I have off is the degas bottle, the bracket, and the upper hose. I'll take an 8mm swivel on a long extension, take the bolts out, loosen the bolts up around the thermostat housing, use a magnet, pull them out. There's four. Like I said, I've already moved a lot of this just to speed it up. Now here, here's the tricky part. You lift up on the base of the ring, you pull it out, you take this out, you take the housing, and pull it out. Now people ask me to show it up close so we can see what's going on. So this is what I was doing as a post-up. You can see there's a place here where it's larger where it fits over it. So as it comes down, I'm taking it and I'm twisting it like this. I'm picking it up, going over here, and taking it out like this. Same way when I'm going back in, large angle like this, over that. So I'm going to replace the thermostats and I'll go ahead and go back in to install it. Okay, now to install this. We've got the new thermostats inside there. Okay, you have a part that's marked top and front. Make sure it goes on that way. And again, here's the, the tricky part. Take it put it down here, focusing on the center, put it down there. Then I'll do just the opposite. Take this with my magnet. Put each bolt down there, or you can do it with the uh, the grease up here on the bolt head and go down there and start it. That's actually an easier way than just to assemble it. It's, everything's just the opposite as far as putting your bracket back on and starting the bolt and doing it there. But as you see, none of the EGR cooler was removed. All right, we have this one all done, and it really is as simple as just the battery 
the degas bottle, the upper hose, the two hoses for the auxiliary fuel cooler, the bracket for the um, EGR cooler support, and the lower clamp like this on the bottom in the thermostat housing. It's not that bad. It looks tight right now, but it's not that bad once you open it up. And a couple things I want to go over. This, is, this has a dual thermostat design, and I realize I'm only holding one, but this is the one that's common to fail. And as you can see, the seals were no longer sealing the, the coolant out, so the water kept bypassing, we have problems. So the, this thermostat has been updated, which helps. And also, as while we're on the subject of updated, I want to go over the upper and lower radio hose. The 6.4 have problems to where the, uh, the original radiator hoses would seal against the block. They, they had a single O-ring. It, it looked like this end. This is the radiator end. It only has one O-ring. It would have one in there. And all the time with the engine always turning and rocking on and off the throttle, the hose would sit there and tss, 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 let pressure off. And they had problems with them. So now they have a dual O-ring design. You can see there's two O-rings inside of there. And also the dual O-ring design has a white end on it. This is true for the upper and the lower radiator hose. If you have the white end on it, you have the updated hose. You really should update your hoses to the dual O-ring design. It will prevent all your cavitation where we have problems with the front cover. It will prevent, pre prevent your hoses from leaking, uh, prevent the hot and cold spikes which causes your radiators to fail and a bunch of issues. So while you're in there or at any time, it, you should be updating your upper and lower hoses too. So these are the two common problems, both been updated, and I just wanted to mention those. It's, that's it. Thank you.